All right, so now that you've had a moment, we're gonna start with card number one over here and then two and then three. All of your timestamps will be in the description box and the comment section down below, as well as links to all of the cards that I'm using for your reading in case something really does kind of resonate with you and you're like, oh my goodness, I have to have that. So I'll put everything down below so that you know what's going on. Let's get right into it, let's get started. And we're gonna start with card number one, and again, all of your timestamps are down below. Hello, card number one. So if you can tell by looking at the beautiful vivid colors in this particular card, this is very joyous energy. You are either experiencing right now or you are about to, in short order here, you are about to experience a lot more happiness and joy. You're experiencing a big shift. Your heart chakra is opening. You are embracing or you're coming out of a period of healing right you're coming out of a period where maybe things have been a little bit challenging or maybe you've had a lack of confidence or there's just been a whole bunch of chaos and confusion that's going on around you so when we get this particular message here this is all about opening your heart chakra to experience more happiness and joy in your life. So embrace this shift that's occurring within you. And remember, this is occurring within you. Happiness and joy and positive, beautiful light starts from within. Anything in our external world enhances our inner happiness and joy, but it's not the sole purpose of it and is not the sole cause of it. So in this energy here, you may have learned a big life lesson on your path to finding your true bliss and happiness. And maybe you don't feel that you're quite there right yet, but you are very much nearing that. You are on the cusp. You're opening up. Some of you are very much leaps and bounds ahead and you're like, yes, 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 I am feeling this. And others of you, you're like, I kind of starting to feel the shift. I don't know that I'm quite there yet, but I've recognized and I realize what I need to do or what blocks I have in my life. So allow yourself to open to some wonder and amazement. Fill this energy with every part of your being. You deserve happiness and bliss. You deserve all of the joy that radiates from your heart. Enjoy this energy, be open to it, be in that flow. And that's where the magic really does happen. That is part of the source of creating the life that we want is really connecting with your emotions in a very positive and very open way, right? And when it's really like the power of positivity, never underestimate the power of positivity, right? The power of positivity doesn't mean that everything goes your way every minute of every day, but it does mean that you shift your personal energy to looking at solutions or seeing the bright light bright side of things even through times of difficulty and turmoil and this makes you very unique and yes you go down a rabbit hole sometimes as everybody does but you have the ability to bring yourself out of that so you have done the work or you are have been doing the work and you are about to experience this shift this is absolutely beautiful energy um, embrace it, live it, love it, be excited for it. Okay. Personal growth, happy experiences, finding that path of your soul that's opening and showing you the wonder and the magnificence that is laying ahead for you. Let's get some more cards. We're going to see which other chakras are opening up for you right now. I'm just going to move this up just a little bit so you can see that on the camera. If I don't have that on the screen, someone steals my videos. So <laughs> I did all the work for it and don't steal my video. All right, let's see what other chakras are opening up and are highlighted for you at this time. We're going to get two of these, I think. Let's see. Messages for picking card number one. Thank you. All right, let's see what we've got. We have clarity. Oh, this is very lovely for you. This represents your higher chakras. Um, card number three coming in here, actually card number 25, but it really is highlighting all of your higher chakras, bringing you clarity. Some of you are seeing things. You're seeing the truth. You're seeing the light. You're getting epiphanies. You're maybe even recognizing certain experiences that you've had in your life and you're like, now I get it. 
Now I understand why I had to go through these challenges, why I had to experience the things that I've experienced, why that I've had to work through all of these challenges. And it's a beautiful experience when we gain clarity because this shifts us out of the, you know, the belief or the energy where everything is working against me, everything is happening to me, um, woe is me sometimes comes out with that too. And when we gain clarity and wisdom, right, we shift out of being stuck in that negative energy because we have that open mind. We've got a better perspective of things and perspective, just like hindsight, sometimes it is, you know, 2020, right? When we do look back on things, right? We have that open mind and we really look at things a little bit differently. And, you know, it's like, oh, I should have known, right? I should have known this, or I knew the red flags were there for this, or, you know, um, all of that. And when we get that clarity that we need, um, it really does open up new worlds for us. And when we speak about healing and forgiveness and things like that, right, it's really a process. It's a journey and it's a long journey sometimes. So I feel here that you may have some epiphany moments coming in or you see things clearly, not just from your past experiences and where you've been, but your soul path is opening up to you. Some of you are recognizing why you're here, right? And sometimes it's just to clear out a soul contract. Sometimes it's just to clear out those karmic cycles, right? And then it's like, oh my goodness, I'm done. Now I'm ready to live my life. Um, for some of you here, maybe you're here to help other people spread the love and the laughter and the joy. Maybe you're a comedian, maybe you crack some jokes and maybe you don't do that for a living, but you might light up a room every time you walk into it. Um, you know, you might be one of those people who, because of your past experience, is your hurt and your pain and everything that you've gone through, maybe now embracing the positive light, that happiness and that joy that is flowing through your heart, flowing through your soul, you are meant to share that with other people in some sort of way, whether you're embracing some healing gifts, some healing energy, maybe you um, join a social group, uh, things like that, right? And you can spread your experiences and show people that even when you feel like you've hit rock bottom, even if you are way down your lowest point that you've ever been, there is always a way forward. There is always a way up. So the clarity that's coming in here for you, you might be, because you're experiencing these shifts, right? You are about to get one hell of a message, okay, from somewhere. So um, watch for signs, symbols, synchronicities around you. Have that open mind. See things from that higher perspective. Trust what you're seeing, what you're feeling, what you're experiencing, and you will get that aha moment. You will get that light bulb that goes off in your mind, just like that those cartoons where they click the light bulb, right? That's what's going to happen to you. And the experience is going to be incredibly profound. We also have listening in here. Now this is blue, so it's associated with your throat chakra. And it's always very interesting, right? Because why on earth is an energy of listening attached to a chakra that is known for speaking, for stating your, for, for opening your voice, for letting yourself be heard? Because you are listening to your higher self. You are listening to your heart and soul. And when we open ourselves up and we listen to what we, um, what our mind, our soul, our experiences have to say, this actually can change how we speak and how we put messages out into the world. It's not always about what we say. It's not always about what we put out. It's also about what we absorb. But through those experiences and through the things that we do here in our heart of hearts and our soul of souls, the things that bring us deeper wisdom and understanding because we've listened to our higher selves and we've gotten the clarity, we've gotten the messages, our truth is different. How we talk to people is different. How we communicate is different and listening is part of communication. But this is all within you. 
So listen to those warning signs. Listen to the green lights that you get. Listen to the voice in your head that's bringing you clarity. Listen and then speak. And your experiences will be a lot different when you do that. And we've all heard the, the saying of count to three before you speak out loud, right? It can sometimes very much be a lifesaver and very much change what you're doing. But I feel here that you are, number one, telling yourself a different story. Instead of telling yourself that, you know, all these bad things keep happening to me and, you know, I'm never going to find happiness. I'm never going to find joy. Instead, you are shifting the script within and you are turning that page over and the voice in your head that you're listening to is heading up to the next level. And it's a beautiful voice and it's a beautiful message. So be open and listen to it. And again, what you project out into the world because you're listening to the voice within and you're using your clarity, wisdom and insights, it changes and it dictates your external experiences in your world. So let's get you more messages and see what other messages are here for you. Messages, please. Card number one. Align with your wholeness. Yeah, the things are aligning for you. Things are coming into your realm um, of physical existence. Things are coming into your material world. Um, you're experiencing those big shifts. You're very aligned. All of your chakras are coming into alignment. Um, you're very much connected with your spiritual side. Um, I think there's some very much a lot of magic that's going on with you guys and it's absolutely beautiful it's maybe like some experience that you've actually never had before and it might be weird and it might be a little bit intriguing on some level but it's I think gonna be quite interesting for you but we have a line with your wholeness here you are not your illness symptoms or habits you the person are always whole and perfect. And when we come into alignment with our energy or when we gain and listen, okay, and be open to those pearls of wisdom that we have gained through our experiences, right? We do recognize that life is never happening to you. Even in the bad experiences, even in the times when you are feeling down, life is always happening for you. You are where you're meant to be. Sometimes, yes, there is a really big divine detour. And some of us have chosen a difficult path. Some of us have been here through many lifetimes. And when we sign our soul contract to come back in this particular realm, we say, hey, you know what? I'm up for the challenge. Give me a difficult path because that's the most rewarding and so in our human experience, though, we don't always remember or recognize that. And so we do kind of really feel like, oh, my goodness, things are just coming at me. It's one thing after another. When am I going to get a break? And the thing is, is that you are not given anything that you can't handle. And when you're experiencing these things and when you're, when you're coming out of these things and when you're recognizing um, the lessons that you've learned, right, that shape and mold you into who you are today, someone whole and someone perfect. Perfection and beauty is in the eye of the beholder and to the universe you are perfect. To spirit you are perfect. You are where you're meant to be in this moment, in the here and the now. Two years ago you were exactly where you were meant to be. Five years ago you were exactly meant to be and five years from now you are still going to be exactly where you're meant to be. Because your path is chosen and you've chosen it and you've chosen to do some hard work, but you're accomplishing things and accomplishing magical things. We have stretch yourself. It is time to move past your comfort zone and into the unknown. Yes, right? Even though your heart is open, you're gaining wisdom, you've got happiness and joy, you've got this massive shift that's in here, you're feeling like things are starting to line up for you. 
you still don't necessarily know what the future holds. But through your experiences and through your pearls of wisdom, you may have really stepped into the understanding that in order for you to grow, in order for you to have more experiences, in order for you to follow your path on your journey, you've got to get out of your comfort zone. You've got to step into the unknown because in the unknown is where all of the magic lies. That's where all the experiences lies. That's where the opportunities lies. And that is essentially where all the growth happens. That's where the shift happens in the realms of the unknown. So step into the unknown. Take a step out of your comfort zone. It's time for you to take that next step and you are taking that next step, right? You've gone through a whole bunch of stuff, but those of you who are still going through a healing journey, you're still figuring things out. You're feeling something happening. You're feeling like maybe there's better things on the horizon. So keep on going. It's not comfortable. Growth isn't comfortable. Wis gaining wisdom isn't comfortable, right? And even opening your heart, to embrace your personal happiness and joy isn't always comfortable either, but it's rewarding and you are paving the path for your future, for your soul to follow, for where it is you are meant to go. So don't be afraid of stepping out of your comfort zone and into the unknown. The future is forever in motion. It's, the, it's perpetual motion, always spinning, always weaving, always changing. And it's because of our own actions. And even though eventually we do end up where we're meant to be, right? We're always where we're meant to be. And eventually we do reach that finish line. It's just sometimes we take a straight line and sometimes we go zigzag, right? We take the army march all the way around and it takes us a, it takes us a lot longer. But again... That's the wisdom that you build in your soul. So there's growth here for you. There's spiritual growth. There's enlightenment coming in. Of course, we've got clarity coming in, right? And this big, beautiful shift in opening your heart and your soul. And it's time for you to soar to new heights. Absolutely beautiful. Soar, soar, soar. Be free. Spread your wings and fly. You're getting ready to fly high above all your obstacles and embrace life in the most magical way. Beautiful sunrises on the horizon. Why? because everything's lining up for you everything's opening up for you at this time embrace the magic embrace the joy embrace this wonderful being that is you quiet your conscious mind and connect with your beautiful energy connect with your chakras connect with your higher senses your higher chakras embrace all of the beautiful energy that's around you and imagine Imagine where you want to go. Imagine the magic that is flowing and coursing through you and to you. It comes in, you embrace it, you examine it, you play with it a little bit, your inner magic, and then you spread that light to the world. It's beautiful, beautiful energy. So things are opening up for you in just the most interesting and the most um, magical probably even unexplainable ways. Remember, the mysteries of the universe don't always need to be explained. That's our human brain that's wanting to create logic, right, out of the unknown or out of chaos. And, you know, sometimes things defy logic. We're not meant to necessarily understand all of the ins and outs. We're just meant to embrace. So embrace that magic that is within you. Let's get a few more cards just to round out your reading. Last messages, please, for those who chose that beautiful, glorious card number one. We've got the Ten of Coins. The Knight of Coins in reverse. The Eight of Swords. And the ace of coins. I feel that some of you have been very much working through a time of loss or a time when you feel as though a whole bunch of doors have been closed for you. A time where you've maybe felt stagnant and stuck. And it can just be your journey right? Your journey forward, we do sometimes feel like we're just spinning our wheels, like we're just 
moving from one experience to another and it's everything is like same, same. It's like, oh my goodness, here we are again. So if you've been feeling as though you've been stuck in a rut, if you've been, you know, really not experiencing a lot of forward movement, your world is about to open in huge ways. Your path to abundance, safety, security, fulfillment, restoring family connections, getting more money, following a career path that you're meant to follow, and just trusting in your experience and your journey. I think here that those doors are opening for you in magical ways. We do have the Ten of Coins, right? And the Ten of Coins brings abundance into your life. It also does very much highlight the things in your material world that make you feel safe and secure. The house the house you live in, the roof over your head, the family connections that you have, the money that you make, your career path that you've been on or that you want to be on. But there is some resistance energy here. We've got the Knight of Coins in reverse. We've got that Eight of Swords. So I feel here that you're finding new ways to follow your path to bliss because we've got the Ace of Coins here as well. It's like, yes, Ace in the hole, right? We love Aces. Aces are new beginnings. They're a fresh start. They're leveling up in your experiences. They're ex improvements that are coming in, something manifesting, materializing in your physical world. You can see it. You can touch it. You can embrace it. So either you're making steps to move forward, get out of your comfort zone to follow your true bliss, or whether you have something wonderful that's coming in. And why? Because you're attracting it to you. New people, new experiences. You're repairing something in your world, something internally, something externally. And all you need to do here, you have the power to free yourself and have a fresh start. You have the power to free yourself and heal and repair. You have the power to get out of your comfort zone, to open your heart and do something a little bit different. But whatever your situation, whatever your journey, the universe is sending you a gift with the Ace of Coins. Something that you have chosen to bring into your life. It may be a little surprise, maybe a little magic in the air, but there's fresh energy coming in. So even if you've experienced loss, and struggles even if you've been feeling and have been processing situations that have been broken maybe even you think beyond repair trust that there's a better way there's a new way forward we love the aces they bring magic they bring gifts from the universe they bring fresh opportunities in here and they are a result of all of your hard work and all of your effort and all of your bravery and strength to step forward into those paths unknown. Break out of an old cycle. Remember your power within the Eight of Swords out of your head into your heart, right? The Knight of Coins in reverse, we sometimes have been lost or we've experienced loss or something hasn't moved forward the way that we want, right? And sometimes those roadblocks in our life, there's a reason for it because there's a better, newer, brighter path ahead. So there's magic in the air, there's doors opening up for you. Embrace that, open your heart, be thankful and grateful for everything in your life that you've experienced and trust that everything is lining up for you in the most magical ways. Embrace the abundance that is knocking at your doorstep. I'm going to leave that there for you guys. I hope there was something here for you. Um, if there was, please like this video, subscribe to my channel. Um, let YouTube know that uh, you enjoyed your video. We're going to leave that. Embrace your magic. Open that heart of yours. Beautiful energy. All right. And have fun. All right. We're going to move on now to card number two. 
Hello, those of you who chose card number two um, out of your options, you've got card number 36. And in this energy, this is something revealed to you. Watch for any kind of signs, any kinds of dreams. When we have this particular card here, this is, this, this is your soul. This is the universe reminding you about how wonderful and beautiful you are, about how much you have to offer, how much you have to give. It's time to reveal your true self to the entire world. Show people what you're made of, to follow your dreams, to follow your goal. Don't hide yourself away. Expand your horizons, expand the universe, love yourself, love life. Let people see the real you. Some of you may be hiding behind a mask of some kind. Are you in a relationship where you have to conform and you can't be, you don't feel that you can be yourself? Maybe someone is trying to squash the real you. This can be a personal relationship, a friendship, a job. Some sort of environment that's around. Are you? What are you hiding? Some of you, you just hide your feelings. Maybe you hide yourself. Maybe there's something that you're gifted at, something that you're really talented at, but you're keeping it to yourself and you haven't shared it with the world. Perhaps there's a little bit of fear. Fear of maybe failure, right? If we show people, hey, look what I've been doing, right? And, you know, sometimes we're afraid of a little bit of criticism. Or afraid of not under, people not understanding why we enjoy something or why we do something. And, you know, those critiques can be scathing sometimes. But your soul is showing you that really it is you have so much wonderful things to offer, so much things to give. Your feelings are all valid. Your thoughts are all valid. Your talents, your skills, your gifts, they're all valid because they're part of you. Open your heart, open your soul, and let yourself free. Let yourself shine and let yourself radiate that wonderful light within into the world. And we all do find ourselves in those situations every once in a while where we have to put on a mask, right? We feel a little bit stifled, oopsies. We feel a little bit stifled, we feel stuck, right? We feel like we have to hide, we have to watch what we say. But ultimately, Spirit says it's time for change. And when we go deep, when we go within, we can find a better way, things that are more in alignment with who we are. And we can be honest and we can be authentic. And that's what spirit wants you to embrace, your true, wonderful, authentic self. We have your heart chakra that is highlighted for you here. Work with the color green, work with your heart chakra, but your heart is opening. And this is speaking to your inner child. So interesting. We all have a dream. We all have a vision. We all have something that we want to do. Sometimes we have our dreams that are squashed when we're children. Sometimes there's something that excited us or that, um, you know, we started to do when we were a child and then, you know, we had to adult for a while. So your inner child is wanting to come out wanting to have fun, wanting to say, hi, I'm here. And when we embrace our inner child, we actually do quite often um, put down barriers and put down some walls. We remove the filter. Your inner child is saying, don't filter me. I want to speak out. I want to be free. So maybe some of you just need to do something in your world where you can have a little bit more fun, where you can embrace your inner child. Some of you, there's a little bit of healing energy that's coming in here, right? Some old child that we quite often, um, we quite often when we're uh, kids, our experiences in our formative years um, quite often do have a, have a very profound effect on our adulthood, right? And a lot of times when we're, when we're children, we have silly dreams, 
right? We're like, I want to do this. I want to be an astronaut, right? I want to go to Mars. And while those dreams may have been very far out of reach when you were a child, now we are seeing you can book a flight to Mars. It hasn't left yet, but you know, and you have to be chosen. But is it really that silly of a dream anymore? Maybe not. Even being an astronaut, we've got normal, regular civilian folk um, that sometimes do get that chance to be an astronaut. So maybe it would seem silly 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 50 years ago, 10 years ago, but it's not so much now, right? We have been shown that pretty much anything is possible. So when we have this inner child energy, right, anything is possible to squash the voice in our head that have been dictated from people in our younger years, our old experiences that said, you can't do this. You're never going to make money at this. You're going to fail at this. That's not a, that's not a realistic dream. That's not a realistic goal. You have to do this, this, this in your life. Right. And it's like stifling sometimes. And sometimes it can actually, um, really create fear in our world. So embrace your heart, open your heart, embrace that inner child that's dying to come out and have some fun. Take the filter off and you gain clarity, you gain wisdom, you gain insight, you heal. But removing that filter allows you to shine. So maybe you have a silly dream or something that someone told you was silly. Maybe you have something where you need to break down a barrier because you need to quiet the voice in your head that someone else put there embrace that child speak your truth and be authentic very lovely we've got blue energy here really highlighting your throat chakra so this is so important right to be authentic to be truthful to be honest it's all about your voice the voice within and your external voice what do you want to say what do you want to get off your chest what truth do you need to reveal remember the card you chose is all about revealing something. Maybe there's something within you that you need to reveal to yourself, that you need to be honest with yourself about. The scales of justice shall prevail. You have the ability here to restore balance and harmony in your life. You have the ability here to make the right choices and the right decisions for yourself. And you have the ability here to create to follow your passion and your goals and your dreams, but you got to be honest about it. got to be authentic with yourself. Maybe not so much with other people, right? Sometimes with other people, but they don't dictate you, right? Maybe there's a big breaking free energy here, right? Because when we get water and fire, right? We've got the scales of justice there, but we also have water and fire. Water and fire bring about an energy of alchemy, of creating something. But when you put water and fire together, you get steam, the fire initiates action, turns passion into forward movement. Follow your passions, follow your goals. The water represents your emotions, but also represents your power of creativity. We have all creative juices flowing. You're connected with your heart already. Your heart is where your creativity comes from too. So there's something you want to create, something that you want to change, or something that you really do need to show to other people, or something, environments or people or situations that you need to break free from so that you can create the life that you want, that you deserve, that you dream of. Maybe it, may, it represents leaving other people behind. Maybe you need to put up boundaries, break down barriers, break down walls detach from people or situations that are holding you back from living your vision, from following your passion. Be honest with yourself. Truth will always set you free. It's not easy to speak our truth sometimes. It's not easy to be honest and listen to that voice within. It's not easy to have conversations with people, right? Because there's always a little bit of fear of how they will react or what if I speak my truth what if I get something out in the open and I lose everything that I've built? Well, 
if that's the case, scary as it is and daunting as it is, if by being honest and by being unique and authentic, if by doing that causes things to leave your life, maybe that it was just a house of cards anyway, which is a painful realization sometimes to come to, but it's also freeing. And it's like, you didn't support me anyway, or I just can't live a lie. So for some of you, there's just something that you do that you haven't told people about, right? But for others of you, this goes a lot deeper. And perhaps you have been in those situations where you feel in some way that you are living a lie. Like, oh, I have to pretend to be someone I'm not today, right? Or I really want to say something or reveal some feelings, but I better squash them down because it's just not going to go well for me. It's going to result in an argument. It's going to result in some trouble. And so in those situations, perhaps those aren't meant to be anyway. So in order for you to reveal your true authentic self, not just to the world, but to yourself, most importantly, and to be honest, sometimes there is a breaking free. But when we have that truth card come in there with your throat chakra, with the passion, with the fire, initiating action to create, to create change in the most positive way. It requires courage, it requires faith, but it also is spirit really saying here that you have the power within and don't let anyone hold you back. We have balancing act, freedom of choice, and onward and upward. Well, isn't that interesting? Because we're really going back to these scales here. Balance, harmony, creation, passion, fire, initiation, action. And we have balancing act coming in here. Some of you, you just need some more balance in your life. And in order to do that, you've got to stay, speak out loud, right? You've got to reveal something. You may be putting all of your time and energy into one area and neglecting other areas that need your immediate attention. What are you ignoring? What dream do you have? Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? You have the ability to restore balance and harmony. You also have the energy here to get all of your facts, all of your information to make an informed, unbiased decision. Maybe it's a practical approach. Maybe you write things down on a piece of paper, pros and cons, <laughs> right? What I want versus what I have right now. My goals, my dreams, where do I feel stuck? And it gives us a little bit of clarity and a sense of direction. So there's something out of alignment and something is being brought into alignment for you. Remember, whatever your situation is, no matter how good, no matter how challenging, that you always have the freedom to choose. Your choices are yours to make. Don't allow others to make your choices for you. And that is such a very important, profound message and something that, that we quite often forget. Because we allow others to quash our dreams and our desires. We allow others sometimes to dictate things to us. And it doesn't always work for us, but sometimes we go along to keep the peace, to keep the balance and harmony. But really, if we're always caving, if we're always giving in or we're letting someone dominate us or we're not speaking our truth out there and we're not saying, well, I don't want to do that or I don't like that, then is that really freedom of choice? Maybe not. So where do you need more freedom? What do you need to choose? What do you need to decide? Where do you need the balance? All of this is very much being highlighted for you here. But we have onward and upward as well. It's your time to shine. It's your time to break free. It's your time to follow your goals, your dreams, your desires, your bliss. Let go of the past so you can be present and create the future you desire. And again, for some of you, there's just so much magic that's coming in. There's magic coming in for all of you. But for some of you, it's really just about something that you really want to do or a goal that you really want to reach. And this is spirit saying that decide, 
decide what you want, and then take action. Be honest with yourself. What's going to make you happy? What's going to feed your inner child, right? For others of you here, it's a very difficult journey and you've been stuck for a while and you've been stifled for a while and you've been feeling the pressure, you've been feeling the, the, the restriction, but you're also starting to feel the resistance. You're starting to feel a little bit of rebellion welling up from within. A little bit of rebellion is not that bad because when we sometimes feel rebellious, Uranus is at play. Our lovely little planet Uranus there, which is the planet of rebellion, creating change, encouraging us to create some change or to break free and do what we want or do what we need or do what we desire. Do what makes us happy. Do what breaks us free. Uranus does not like to be stifled and free, right? So embrace a little bit of rebellion. It's not a bad thing. We're told when we're children, right? When kids rebel. They push the envelope. They push their boundaries. Teenagers, rebellious little teenagers they are. It's their job, right? It is their job to test the waters, shall we say right? They wouldn't be teenagers. They wouldn't be kids if they didn't push that envelope. So sometimes we have to do that, right? So onward and upward, whatever your situation happens to be. We have the six of coins in reverse, something out of balance. Whoops, wrong way around. Something out of balance, something out of alignment there. We need to focus. We've got the strength card the Six of Cups, and Judgment. Wow, what an interesting little story. Because here's the thing. The Six of Coins. Usually the Six of Coins is a wonderful energy. Balance and harmony restored. We're getting what we deserve. It's a very much a flow of energy. What we put out flows back to us. But in the Six of Coins in reverse, there's something out of alignment. Something's not working. We're not getting back the effort that, that we put in. We're investing in things, but we're not seeing the return. We're not seeing the rewards because there's something not quite there. There's something not quite in alignment. So when we get the six of coins, Spirit is really saying here that there is a need to focus on restoring balance in your world. It's a give and take. Everything in in the universe is a give and take. What you put out, the energy flows back multiplied, right? Give when you have a lot to give and then reap the rewards on the back end when you need them. Help others and they will then help you. Commit to your goals, your dreams, commit to a person and they should in theory commit back. But when we're not getting that back, when there's blocks, there's resistance, or there's people that take, 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 and we don't get anything in return, or we're not, the scales of justice, the scales of balance are skewed in some way, decisions to make. Because there's something trying to come in for you. There's something trying, there's rewards out there for you. There's happiness, there's bliss, there's joy, there's success out there for you. But again, there's something here that we need to choose, something here that needs a little bit of tweaking, needs realignment. But we've got the strength card, so remember how strong you are. Remember how powerful, how brave, how courageous you are. The strength card reminds you of that inner strength to break free, to break down boundaries, to break down barriers, to break down walls, to follow your bliss, to follow your happiness, to do what you want to do and what you need to do for your heart, for your soul, for your happiness, for your heart. The strength card always is a reminder that sometimes we need to dig deep. We need to dig into our little, our personal well of confidence, of bravery, of boldness, that lion that lies within all of us. And sometimes we need to take a kinder, patient approach to things as well. So for some of you, yes, 
you've got that inner strength. We all have that inner strength. For some of you, you need to put on that brave face. You need to be courageous because you do need to do something that's very challenging. Others of you, a little patience is required. Remember that you're strong. Remember, you know, you're confident in everything that you do. Even sometimes you don't feel like it. It's all inside. But sometimes we need to be patient. We need to do things in a calm and gentle way. And we need to find the balance between the two. Right? So in like a lion, out like a lamb is really the way that goes. Okay? And sometimes we just need that courage. We need to just embrace our inner strength just to have a conversation. Or just to try something new to get out of our comfort zone. This is how we create change. But we need to be kind to ourselves. We need to be compassionate. We need to sometimes take the high road. We also need to be patient because sometimes timing is everything, right? You know, um, if we want to set ourselves up for success and set ourselves up for a positive conversation and things like that, we got to pick our moment sometimes. So we do sometimes need to be a little bit patient in that energy as well, but we can break free. We can set boundaries or, you know, we can even leave situations behind. It takes courage to do that, but we can do so in a kind and compassionate way because then we are feeling good about how we have dealt with a situation but the six of cups speaks to your inner child the six of cups is a card of innocence it's a card of embracing that inner child of living in the moment living in the here living in the now being present and enjoying yourself, doing things that put a smile on your face, doing things that are fun, doing things that are exciting. The Six of Cups does speak with that inner child. So it's time for your inner child is really trying to break free here on some level. But the Six of Cups can be, you know, a reminder from spirit saying, here and now, your past experiences have dictated or have you know created the world that you live in now your thoughts your emotions your environment right your commitments whatever that happens to be but if you don't like it or if it's stifling remember your past doesn't dictate your future the time is here the time is now examine your situation do you want to try something new do you want to break away from something what is paving the path for your future? Because you have the power to change it. You have the power within strength to do what you love, to love what you do, to do things that make you happy and to change your future. We can quite often, you know, quite often when we just live one day at a time, Six of Cups reminds us that enjoy the moment, enjoy today, one day at a time. Reflect on your past to see how far you've come or to see what experiences or what decisions have led you up to today. And if you're not happy with it, do something different that affects your tomorrow. Because the Six of Cups is an energy where it brings some nostalgia. It does bring some reflection on the past. Sometimes the Six of Cups can revive something from the past. It can bring back people. It can bring back opportunities. It can revive a dream. And then in the present moment, in the here and now, we decide what we want to do tomorrow. So remember the power within. There's a gift, an opportunity, a door opening for you with the Six of Cups. Something wants to come back to you. We said that with the Six of Coins. Something wants to come back to you or something wants to come to you, whether it's a goal, a vision, a dream, a second chance, a new opportunity, a chance to fix, to heal, to restore. With the Six of Cups, we can restore balance. We can restore harmony. We don't necessarily have to break free, right? But we do need to be honest and truthful. But have fun and be in the here and now because the time is very much now with the Judgment Card. The Judgment Card can bring in second chances, but it's very important when we get the judgment card that some of you are having to recognize that some of you are having very much an awakening and epiphany. You're seeing the truth. You're seeing the light. You're gaining clarity and insights and things. And once we see the truth, there's no turning back. There's no, there's no going back and up because that truth shall set you free and move you forward in a wonderful way 
but sometimes the truth that can set you free requires you to let something go or requires some change. But there's a revelation here, this truth that is here. Something coming in is quite often internal or a message from spirit. And once you get that insight, it's like, whoa, man, I get it now. Yeah, I get it now. Message heard, message received. So be open to receive those messages. But the judgment card can be an energy where something that we've been hiding in the darkness comes out to the light. So this could just be parts of you. You're revealing yourself to the world with the judgment card. You're letting go of inhibitions. You're being bold and you're being brave. And you're letting your light shine just like the card you chose. For others of you, you're getting a revival. You're getting a second chance. What is it that you want a second chance for? This also brings about an ability to heal from situations as well. So even if we're breaking free, there's healing. And that's here also. The judgment card is represented by Archangel Michael. Archangel Michael brings us power and strength. The sword that Archangel Michael brings in gives us the extra energy boost that we need to be confident, to be honest, and brings clarity and healing, detaching ourselves from situations or thoughts or fears that have been blocking our progress, blocking our growth. So embrace, work with Archangel Michael um, because number one, head cheese, right? Head cheese of the Archangels is Michael, the most powerful one but can help us be confident, can help us along our journey. Always there by our side. Say Archangel Michael name three times and ask for a sign, ask for some help and support. You will get it like now, like stat. But yes, revelation, truth, breaking free, second chances, you name it. Whatever your situation is, be authentic. Be you, reveal your true self, be honest and open, and remember, onward and upward, wonderful things are blossoming in your world right now, and it's your time to shine. So I'll leave that there for you. I thank you for watching. I hope there was something here for you. If so, please like this video, share, and subscribe to my channel. I thank you for watching. We're going to move on to card number three. And hello, those of you who chose the card number three. Now, but last but not least, this is card number 39 out of this deck. Do you ever find yourself seeing messages, seeing repeating numbers, signs in the clouds? Maybe sometimes you just have a sense. A sense that you know what to do or where to go and maybe you feel led maybe you feel guided and you're just you're not sure it feels right but you can't put an explanation to it you have a gift you have a talent this is your calling you have a strong ability to communicate download and interpret messages and teachings from all divine beings your spirits angels guides past loved ones and all of the beings of the light that are around us everything in spirit and the universe this is a rare gift one that you may just be awakening to or maybe it's one that you've known for a long time maybe you've always just had a sense of knowing maybe you've always just felt a little bit of a connection Maybe when you were a child, you had an invisible friend. My theory behind that is our invisible friends when we're children, because to them it's very real, and adults tend to dismiss it. But my philosophy there is that your childhood friend, your imaginary friend, so to speak, is actually your spirit guide because children are more open to seeing and just believing, kind of like Santa Claus, right? You don't have to see it to believe it. But with the spirit guides, they see it. They know they're there. They're their friend, their protector. They talk to them. This is really calling you to use your gifts. Use your gifts for yourself to really just follow the guidance. You don't need to question it. You don't need to doubt it. You don't need to understand it. It's just there. 
follow it because that's the path that's leading you down the garden path and what's on the other side of that garden path, what's at the end is something beautiful and something so wonderful and so enlightening. One of your gifts is having the ability to share your talents, your gifts with other people. Maybe you give people guidance. Maybe you have a natural born ability to listen to be empathetic to others, to maybe even give a little bit of help or insight because you just know you speak the words that are needed and you don't necessarily know why or where they came from. It's a beautiful, beautiful gift to be able to channel those messages, those teachings that are coming to you. One of the best ways to hone those gifts and talents is to meditate, work with crystals, Sit in quiet silence and see what flows, see what comes to you. Work on your chakras, especially your higher chakras, right? Your soul star chakra, which is really where the major connection comes from, flows down into your crown chakra, into your third eye. You can see things others can't. You've got visions. Flows down to your throat chakra, giving you the ability to speak and to share those messages that you're getting with other people to give those insights that maybe others can't see to give a different perspective that others may not necessarily be aware of because their conscious mind is in the way flows down to your heart chakra beautiful green energy there flows down to your heart chakra to open you up to help you receive to help you gain wisdom and understanding without question so use your gifts use those beautiful things hone them explore them don't be afraid of them for some of you you are experiencing you've been through this for a while right you've been going on a path of spiritual growth for a while and you are experience you are about to experience a massive shift forward others of you again you're just awakening and it feels weird um it feels a little bit eerie maybe Maybe you're doubting yourself, asking all these questions. What does everything mean? Why is everything? You're just seeing things in a different way. Just go with the flow. Quiet your mind. Do some meditations and it will really help you. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful cards that we've got out for you next. We've got spiritual practice and we also have a divine plan. So you have a plan in this lifetime. We all do. And yours is channeling messages, is using your gifts and talents and following that garden path. Follow the yellow brick road, my friends, because the Wizard of Oz is waiting at the other side. It kind of looks like that a little bit, doesn't it? So we do have spiritual practice here for you as your next message. Making time for your spiritual practice will assist you with clearing your mind and restoring your inner peace. Beautiful. Sometimes we're just meant to grow and evolve spiritually in this lifetime. And as we stumble across people or as, you know, we make connections through our lives, we're just, you know, we're just there, right? And what comes out, what comes out, what connections we make, we mean, sometimes those connections are fleeting and sometimes they are solid. But whatever your situation is, your spiritual practice, meditations, working with crystals, working with your chakras, all of those things will very much help you. You may be one of those people where, you know, especially if you're just starting to get into meditative practice, <clears throat> there's a lot of fluff and flutter around spiritual practice, around meditations, around rituals, things like that. And it can get overwhelming and it can get confusing and all of that creates a lot of noise. It creates all that background noise like, you know, the old school TVs where you had the white snow. Keep it simple, friends. Keep it simple. When you first start to get into meditation, even if you're actually well practiced at it, sometimes as you're quieting your mind, right, as you're getting into the zone, you will find that your body has little ticks. You'll find you might get restless leg syndrome, you might, your foot might kick out a little bit, your toes might wiggle, you might get a little electrical shocks all over you. Just acknowledge it and let it go and keep on going. All that is is that it's your mind, it's excess energy is what it is, right? And your body is like, whoa, just saying, what do I do with this? Um, but it's also your conscious mind that's trying to take over. 
because it's used to being busy. It doesn't want to be put on park, right? It doesn't want to have a nap, right? So this is, it's kind of like a little bit fighting back. Just acknowledge those little slips and kicks and electrical shocks and whatever it is you happen to be. Even thoughts that happen to come into your head. It's like you're starting to meditate and you're like, oh my God, I got to do laundry, right? Or you're like, oh my goodness, I have a report due tomorrow. I totally forgot about it. Uh-uh. Acknowledge the thought, acknowledge the feeling and let it go. You can come back to it later when you're done. So keep things simple. Don't get overwhelmed. Don't sit there and do, you know, 33 steps to manifestation, right? I mean, sure, that might work for some people, but I don't know who can remember those many steps, that kind of thing. So keep it simple. Do what works for you and don't get caught up in all of the hustle and bustle and all these things. Everyone thinks they're right. Everyone has their own way. The thing is, the way that is right is the way that works for you. All right. But Spirit has a divine plan for you. Now, this is going to be a little different for each and every one of you. You're opening up, you're awakening, you're experiencing these shifts. And you've got a gift. You can channel all these messages. You can gain deeper wisdom and understanding. You can share your insights with other people. But it's all, it's all part of a plan. But what does it mean? Through meditation, you will find your answers. Through practicing your gifts, through embracing it, not questioning it, not doubting it, not running away from it. Just embrace it. Don't be afraid. Just acknowledge and keep on going on. The plan will be revealed to you when it is meant to. Your soul has a master blueprint of your life path that it holds within it. It will never steer you in the wrong direction. Again, trust it. Trust it. Let's get a couple more cards and see what other messages are here for you. Messages, please, for card number three. I'm loving this for you guys. This is just so nice. Let's see. We'll get a second one of these. There we go. Two of these, please. Oh, bonus. We got a third. Great. All right. Threes are a good number. All right. So we have here, oh, wonderful. Card number 31, bringing you peace, bringing you a connection. It's a beautiful looking card, isn't it? All of your higher chakras are open right now to their fully receptive state. Don't push the issue, don't force the issue, just allow. We sometimes get frustrated along our path and our spiritual journey because we want everything to happen here and now we want everything to happen all at once and we get frustrated if we plateau or we get frustrated when we feel we've lost the connection, right? You're not ever losing the connection, it's just that sometimes there's things you need to deal with. There's part of your divine plan. With the peace energy comes a reawakening, comes a rebirth. It comes with all of this connection with the universe and you don't always know what to do with it all, but it feels good, feels calm. The peace energy is helping you to heal, helping you to forgive, helping you to let go, but helping you also to gain deeper wisdom and insights and understanding about things that you have gone through in your lifetime. Not just this lifetime, but maybe past lifetimes as well. And it's all part of your journey, all part of your plan. So just like the beautiful lotus flower, open up. Open up and receive all of the blessings that are coming to you. And all of the abundance that's coming to you here as well. It's so interesting that uh, that uh, I got the message there about, um, you know, about the 33 steps to manifestation, right? Number one, we've got three cards coming out. I was only going to get two. Um, but threes are actually, three is the number of creation, it can also be teamwork and collaboration, but we're always in partnership with the universe and with spirit. But threes are the basis of manifestation. So this is a time of abundance for you. This is a time when you're very much in the flow. You're recognizing and realizing your infinite potential. You have the ability to attract the right people at the right places at the right time for you. You have the ability here to embrace all of the wonderful energy and power of the universe and use that to your advantage to manifest things into reality and to really be in the flow. Eight is the number on this card. Eight is the number of infinity, recognizing and realizing your true potential, stepping into your wonderful gifts. Eights are also about um, abundance, manifestation, 
and being in the flow, being flexible, being adaptable, and being open. So be open to all of your gifts, be open to the messages and allow all of the abundance to flow to you. Abundance doesn't necessarily quite often when people think of the word abundance, we think money because we're human and we live in the physical world. So we do quite often think abundance means money. Prosperity is money. Abundance can be anything because what abundance really is, is you have everything that you need plus more so that you don't need to worry, right? And so you don't need to fret about things. Abundance can be friends, family, messages, gifts, talents, money. Yes, it can be. Opportunity, all of these things. So allow the abundance to flow into your world. Work on your, um, this is your root chakra with the red. And the root chakra is number one, very connected with the earth, things manifesting into the earthly realm for you. Okay, but the root chakra is also where we are grounded. Remember before engaging um, in any kind of spiritual practice, remember to ground and protect your energy. It's really just so that you can keep your feet on the ground and you can feel like a little bit uh, solid, right? it's like, like safe and secure. It also does just protect you in this beautiful spiritual bubble, right? So what I usually do, um, if you're you know just starting out your journey, um, <clears throat> just imagine your feet planted on the ground, even if they're not, um, your feet planted on the ground. I imagine quite often roots coming out of the ground and just grabbing onto my ankles, not in a scary horror story kind of way, just in a nice way. And then I know that I'm always centered. I'm always grounded. Um, I'm always connected with the earth. So whatever I'm doing, spiritual practice, um, I like to do some astral travel and things like that sometimes. So, um, you know, having your feet on the ground, you know, is a really, really important thing. Okay. So sometimes that's what I do, but you can also root, um, work with your root chakra in many other ways. You can do that by guided meditation. If you're not sure how to begin, um, you can work with crystals, anything red, right? Use anything red, red clothes, um, red jewelry, um, red crystals, anything like that. So the color red really does help us stay grounded. And we have another grounding energy, your root chakra here as well with balance. Everything is a balance. Okay. And so focus on finding balance in your life. And this is where we um, be flexible and adaptable. And this can actually bring us more peace, balance and harmony into our world. So with the balance energy, it is important to make sure that you are making space for you. When we are out of balance, when we're out of alignment, we quite often overcompensate in other areas. And especially as you're going through um, any kind of awakening or anything like that, even if you weren't, right? Even if you weren't, balance is a good thing. So when we are, we have a balance between our masculine and feminine, right? We all carry masculine and feminine energies. The feminine energy is connected with things like our heart chakra right? One of the biggest ones, right? And this is where we engage in our feelings. This is where we are open, we're receptive, and we have that connection with the divine. Our masculine energy, right, is something that is connected with, let's say, our solar plexus chakra right in the middle, right by your diaphragm. That's your source of personal power. But this gives you confidence. This gives you that masculine energy of, I'm going to get something. I'm going to take some initiative. I'm going to go for something. And when those things are in alignment, that's when the, ma the um, magic really does happen because we're open and receptive for things like opportunities, right? And then we've got that energy, that masculine energy to take that action, to take that first step forward. And it's like things work together. But when something's out of alignment, right? If you're always just go, 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 get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. And then we're not open and we're not taking that time to receive or to understand things. Things tend to get a little bit chaotic. When we are ignoring our uh, spiritual health, our mental health, our emotional health, and we're only focused on the physical pleasures in life, right? Again, we tend to overcompensate, right? We take solace in things that on the surface aren't bad, but they can send us down a rabbit hole. So things like, you know, we take comfort in food. Food is wonderful. We need food to live. We need it to be nourished. But sometimes we can go to excess. 
because we're filling a void. We're overcompensating somewhere. Some people drink, right? Grab that, grab that beer, right? One beer leads to two beers, which, hey, that's great. Everything in moderation, nothing wrong with that. But it, it does become a problem when it becomes like, you know, six or eight or 20, right? And it's like there, because there's something there usually in our human existence, we're trying to fill some sort of void or we're trying to heal or ignore um, things in our world. So it's like when we're, when we're not engaged with all of our um, emotions are, we're not taking care of our mental health. We're not taking time for spiritual practice, right? We do tend to overcompensate. So balance is very important and spirit really wants you to make space, make time to engage in that spiritual practice, to find time for yourself. And you know, some, some, for some of you, what works for you as a spiritual practice may not be sitting in a lotus position on, you know, on your floor, uh, singing Kumbaya and chanting Om. That might not be it for you. Right, maybe what is working for you is going outside and connecting with nature, especially with all of this root chakra energy here. Right, very connected with the earth, very connected with the ground. A lot of people find being outside to be a wonderful form of meditation. Right, we're open, we're enjoying the expanse of the earth, of the universe. We're going through the forest, we're listening to the birds, we're talking to the trees, right? Maybe you lay on the grass and you look up at the sky and you just watch the clouds go by and that's how you receive your messages. So, you know, Spirit really wants you to do what's right for you, but make that time, make that space for yourself, right? And that way you can find more peace, more balance, and more harmony in your world. We have the fountain. Wow. Okay, I'll explain that in a second. We've got the four of coins reminding you to be grounded, the king of cups to open your heart, and the two of swords inviting you to go within and listen to your higher self, okay, to really trust the messages that you're seeing and don't let anyone convince you otherwise. So this deck is called the fountain right? That's the name of the deck. And it has one special card, one, and it's called the fountain. And if we look on the fountain card right at the top, we have an infinity symbol. When the fountain appears in your reading, this is a reminder to relinquish control and find the stillness, find the quiet and be open and receptive to the messages that you hear. This invites you to be more of an observer rather than trying to remain in control. And it's a reminder to just be. Be in the flow, be connected, be open, observe and embrace the higher perspective that is coming to you and that is flowing through you. Life is, gets a little more effortless when we are in the flow. And the fountain is very special. That doesn't come out very often, believe me, in this deck. All right? So embrace that energy. Trust that everything is flowing to you, through you, and out of you, right, towards other people. It's beautiful. This is about being one with the universe. You may be gaining clarity, you may be gaining insights, but you are fully awake and open. And some of you, you might not feel you're there yet, but you are very much on your way. The Four of Coins reminds you to have your feet planted firmly on the ground, to stay grounded, to stay centered, but also be open. Your values might be changing, your outlook on things in your world may be changing, and it's all for the better. You had this big shift that's here, but keep that connection with the earth. Keep that connection with the ground, right? But the four of coins, sometimes we're in that energy. Sometimes we do tend to be a little bit closed off, right? We're holding on to old values. We're holding on to ways of being, right? There's things that are important, but you're like, ah, oh, I just, I, you know, I don't want to relinquish control. The fountain says, let go of control, stay grounded, be open and allow the magic can happen because your gifts are very powerful. Your gifts are very strong. Some of you are healers. Some of you just have this connection with the divine energy of the universe, with the king of cups, highly spiritual energy, very much in control of your emotions, very much in, um, 
in connection with all of the wonders and the mysteries that are around you. The King of Cups brings in a level of mastery. So some of you, you've been on this path for a while and man, oh man, can you ever help other people through this process? So pause some of your gifts and talents that you're opening up to. Maybe you're getting confidence. The Kings are always confident and they're always very skillful and masterful at things. And the King of Cups, very open, right? Very, very much I'm in charge but I'm also open at the same time. But this is a level of mastery and success. And so some of you, you have gotten to the point where it's time for you to spread your wings and fly. Little butterfly. Time for you to help other people on their journey. Others of you, this is where you're headed. You are mastering this energy. You are opening, you are awakening. And trust your journey because the King of Cups is always very confident, but very empathetic very much open in all of the higher chakras and especially the heart chakra, right? So, but the kings also take action. And the king of cups is a really interesting mix of being open and receptive and connected with spirit, with emotions, with visions, right? All of those things, but is also a really good balance of that masculine energy as well of taking action, taking initiative, speaking the truth, right? And using the gifts and talents to the best of his ability. So embrace that energy of the King of Cups, right? Wonderful, um, wonderful uh, balance there with that. But the Two of Swords also does represent balance as well. And sometimes, you know, we do again need to find space, right? The Two of Swords is where we're quite often shutting out the world because we're going within so again, find the time here to really connect with yourself. Just a little bit of quiet space, and it doesn't need to be hours on end. It can just be five minutes here, 10 minutes there. Oh, you can do it sitting in your car at lunchtime while you're working, right? Just close your eyes for a few minutes and just, ah, a few deep breaths. Beautiful, right? In with the good, out with the bad. It can really, really help center and ground you in that regard as well. But this is a beautiful path that you're on, beautiful gifts that you're awakening to, stepping into, or mastering at this time. But remember, no matter where you are in your spiritual journey, it's a lifelong journey. Once you start, it's magical and mystical, but it can also be a lot of hard work, right? Because when we're finding peace, when we're forgiving, when we're healing, when we're learning life lessons, we're gaining wisdom and understanding, it's not an easy path. It's also not a light switch. And it's also your personal path. So your path is different than someone's next door, right? Your path is different than mine. And we are unique in the path that we're on, but we also have shared experiences along the way. And we can learn from other people as we go on our way. So find a, a little soul tribe out there somewhere that has you know, the same journey that you're on. Um, maybe you can connect with somebody in person or sometimes it's just solitary because sometimes other people just get in the way, <laughs> right? Uh, they uh, influence what you think you should be seeing or experiencing. Though sometimes it is a very solitary journey, but you're always protected and guided by all of the beings in the universe. Call on them when you're feeling afraid, Call on them when you're feeling unsure. Call on them when you need that peace, that healing, or you're just feeling like you're missing the connection. Your spiritual soul tribe will always be there. Ask for a sign. They will send you a sign. I'm going to leave that there for you. This was beautiful energy, a beautiful message. I really hope you continue on your path, continue on your journey, and spread your word to others. Don't force it upon people right? But maybe a word here, a sentence here, that kind of thing. And remember, oracles, you might be a walking oracle for some people and oracles work in mysterious ways and they never force the issue, right? We can't force someone to listen if they're not open and receptive. So don't worry, right? Sometimes people will unpack things when they're meant to, or they'll ask questions when they get curious. So I thank you for watching, you guys. I hope this did resonate with you on some level. If it did, please do take a moment there to like my video. 
Um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Check out the other playlists that I've got up there. Lots of timeless messages, pick a card readings, but also your practical day-to-day -day messages, your weekly and monthlies there as well. But by doing that on my channel, leave a comment as well. It does let YouTube know also that you enjoyed the reading so more people get to see it. But most important, it lets me know that you are resonating with the reading. And that's the most important thing to me. So I thank you, on, I thank you for watching. I wish you so much wonderful love, light, and luck on your journey. And I will see you back here again.